Hey traders, Rogi here. It's Super Bowl Sunday afternoon and I'm taking a look at the charts because being a big Patriots fan, I'm going to be rooting for my boys this evening. So I wanted to make sure we'd get a quick look at the current open trades in before Monday morning when I'll see you in the chat room members. So kicking off the discussion, I'm going to take a look at the Euro Pound because that is our most recent or two of our most recent fills. Uh, 240 minute time frame swing shorts let's let's jump right into that time frame zoom into this chart and see what we have going on now you can see Friday was the last trading day of the month and there was a lot of volatility and basically you know just running stops those major minor psych levels I think in city it's just a matter of executing pending orders I and mean, that's kind of what happens with these end of month, end of quarter, end of year type volatility days. So looking at our swing shorts from 75.20 and 74.90, we, we actually have now uh, gotten all the way down to, as you can see here, 74.80, 74.80. Now, as great as that is, it still does not reach our first profit target. So we're heading in the right direction. This is now more of a fade. So for those of you wondering, well, can I get in? No, this is not a swing short any longer. So even though we took this back on the 29th, this is no longer a swing short. The market has transitioned out of that market trend. You still want to be on the short side, but it's not a swing short. It's a fade short. And you can see on the spreadsheet, if you log into the members area, take a look at the spreadsheet, you'll see the next trade we have is actually a BTG short on the daily, no longer a, uh, we're not looking at the 240, it's no longer a 240 setup, we're looking at BTG shorts. So this is this is good follow through for us for a Friday, which is, which is terrific. We have a busy week though for the pound, so don't think we're out of the woods just yet. We want to continue to see that euro lose ground against the pound. And a lot of the pound stability, dare we even say strength, is a lot of that, what I'm calling the two and two story, 2% 2 in two years courtesy of Mark Carney. So that's a lot of the reason for expectation for more euro weakness and possibly pound strength or at least the pound holding steady. That's all we really need as long as the euro continues to be weak. All right, next pair is the Aussie versus Canadian dollar. Another setup that we took on the 29th and that was last what was that Thursday last Thursday so this was a daily time frame setup on the Aussie Canadian dollar this is going to be one of those trades that I want to reel in going into next week I'd like to focus more on Aussie US shorts uh, even you know other what are other ways we can play the Aussie to the downside you know I'm looking at Aussie US shorts more so because I'd like to start getting away from the Aussie strength in case the RBA does want to sound a little bit more dovish than we may be anticipating. The great thing about this Aussie Canada long is that it is a Canadian dollar short, but I no longer want to focus on Aussie long, hence you'll see on the pending orders we we're focusing right back on Aussie <clears throat> US. And the cool thing about where this Aussie Canada stands right now is from that 97.85 buy, we followed through now not only through the 98.70 optional profit target, but now through the 98.95 non-negotiable, which means we have a break even at 97.75. 97.75. So this is really on the remaining lots which I have two actually, it's a 10 pip risk for the remaining lots after taking out a 110 pip winner on two lots. So think of it this way, I just made 220 pips and of that I'm risking now 20. So that's your current look at the Aussie versus Canadian dollar. All right, another play we've had open and this is for a little bit while longer, this is a trade from the 28th, not the 29th, and this was the pound US daily swing short. This is a 51.95 short sell that has uh, gotten through the first profit target at 50.85 and was reaching for the second profit target at 49.80 
and we got so far as 49.88 so that second profit target still eludes us there was an optional that I put in at 50.05 so 1.5005 a lot of you wanted something in front of that 50.85 so 50.05 I'm sorry in front of 49.80 sorry in front of 49.80 so a lot of you wanted that 150 handle exit we do have that as an optional target that has been hit now real, realize that 51.95 to 50.85 is 110 pips 51.95 to 50 05 is 190 pips. I know a lot of you are really itching to say, hey, it's the weekend. I can pretty much lock in nearly a 200 pip winner. I want to do it. And that's why we put that optional profit target in the spreadsheet, which actually has been hit. We have another older trade, and that is the 60 minute US dollar Canadian dollar. Now, I love US dollar longs and I love Canadian dollar shorts. But funny enough, the only place that we had some proximity and a real chance to swing at this pitch was on the 60 minute time frame and we had a 60 minute BTG buy from 2385 so remember we have directional bias here really nice directional bias here and the great thing about having the DB is that I can get long across any time frame as soon as they want to load up here I guess this is the fun of doing this on a Sunday uh, but we can go long on any time frame okay any time now <laughs> the fun of live television so let's see we'll come back to this all right so euro us is our oldest position right now 240 minute time frame swing short from 1820 yeah this is a really nice trade we've had open since the 14th we're managing it now we've hit an initial profit target and now I am just backing off I don't I'm not eager to take a second profit target what I want to do is realize I've got four lots that I put on in total two lots came off at 1820 I've got two lots now and I'm just using an EPMR for right now it's a 1455 trailing stop okay that's where managing that monster winner right there really nice monster trend trade there I guess the US dollar Canadian dollar is going to be very cantankerous so Let's just go ahead and, and talk about what we're dealing with on the US dollar Canadian dollar. It was a 2385 buy, and you can see now we're up at 2710. Even though this is a 60 minute time frame, I could actually use the EPMR, the expected price movement range, to manage it. And our current our current trailing stop is way up at 2675. So we're locking in nearly 300 pips on this trade and at the same time we're able to give the market a little bit of wiggle room in terms of where we want to keep this break even I'm probably gonna back this off a little bit more because I want to stick in the, I want to stay in this trade uh, I want to stick to this as as long as I, I can uh, within reason and I'll look to back off by an EPMR here uh, if I can based on the daily here's the US dollar Canadian dollar on the MT4 platform and what I'd like to do is find another break even gives me a little bit more room and that I will likely do with let's see 26 yeah you know 2670 we have 2675 right now um, I wouldn't even mind going 2645 but you can see that we're still working with the EPMRs here and I think it's a, a fairly decent amount of room to to give the market in terms of what we're looking at now which is a trend on an intraday time frame that we took but we really have the longer term time frame still working for us and and this has been great ever since the acceleration obviously of the BOC surprise rate cut and we we got fairly aggressive with a 60 minute time frame in order to capture the the trend as as best we could and maybe we'll do that again this week but I wanted to go over these trades a lot of them are obviously predicated on continued US dollar strength okay and you know if I'm thinking about my favorite ICS's in order they still really are US dollar strength euro weakness Canadian dollar weakness we might start talking about Australian dollar weakness here very soon we might start talking about British pound strength here very soon Japanese yen weakness I think that's a confusing story though as long as a Dow is in chop and then New Zealand dollar 
is a new tomato can. So we want to sell that, being the new tomato can that it is, and preferably against one of the new pairs on our watch list, which is the New Zealand dollar versus U.S. dollar. And I'm even thinking about British pound versus U.S. dollar. I'm sorry, British pound versus New Zealand dollar. We already are in the British pound versus U.S. dollar. So, so these are two ways I'm looking at selling New Zealand dollar against the U.S. and against the uh, Great British Pound. So uh, one of the other aspects to our book is, again, some additional pairs, some additional stories, and some stories that have redefined. And I think we're wondering if we're going to see a redefinition of the Aussie story, maybe more weakness. So we'll have three calm dolls with weakness come next week. All right, that's a current look at our book. It is firing away, looking very good. Uh, we did roll out of some, some trades that we had to take some medicine on. But the reason we keep looking for those new opportunities, not forcing trades, notice I didn't wander back. I do want to mention this here real quick as we wrap up this video. Notice, and, and I don't want to shy away from losers either, we took our medicine on New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. We took our medicine on Euro New Zealand dollar. But we kept looking for new opportunities. These two losses are pale in comparison to the winners that we either took or locked in going into the end of the week. So. Two things a lot of traders do. They start to go right back at those pairs. Those pairs stopped working. I don't want to get back in. That's a revenge trade if the setup is no longer valid. Notice that our current open positions don't include those pairs. Okay? Not because we're shying away from them, but the validity is gone. And then we look for other opportunities. And it's those other opportunities that kind of, you know, picked up our confidence, picked up our pips, you name it. Uh, as we progress through the week. So don't revenge trade. If, if the New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar took our pips away, it doesn't mean that that's the one that's going to give it back. A lot of traders do look to do that. Horrible, horrible habit. So uh, I'm really glad that we continued to move forward, found where the clarity was, and focused on those pairs. So next week, we'll be talking a lot more about Euro Pound, Euro US, Dollar Canada, Aussie US, and pound US, we're going to throw the New Zealand dollar US in there as well. So we're keeping busy and kicking off the month of February. I think we had a great, great week to, to not only come back from just some sudden central bank theme shifts, like what the RBNZ did, hence the losses in Euro New Zealand and New Zealand Canadian dollar, but we came back refocused on some other shifts. And I think we have a really strong book going into February, and we're going to look to build on that next week. So uh, I'll see you in the chat room tomorrow morning.